Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead. We are so glad to have you join us today. We are going to uh, work with uh, some more on leveling up our food storage by um, we're in the middle of organizing our freezer and getting everything ready out there to support level one, which is immediate for two months, our 60 days of meals and uh, with the integration of the freezer, the refrigerator and the pantry. And as we have cleaned out our freezer and are getting the foods organized out there, I realize that we are quite short on uh, packets of chicken meat ready to pull out for meals. We have plenty of frozen breasts and other uh, chicken parts, but we don't have the little packets that I would need for meals, especially for our 60 days of meals. So here's what we're going to be doing today. And this goes directly to emergency preparedness and also for self-reliance. So all three of our main uh, themes that we have for our channel are addressed by this video. So what I have here are three Costco rotisserie chickens, $4.99 a piece, $15 worth of meals. The great thing if you have a Costco by you, this is worth a Costco membership for these chickens alone. You'll not find a better buy anywhere on chicken meat that is already cooked so that you don't have to use up your own energy, your own electricity, or whatever it is you have. These are seasoned. They are uh, run through their big giant rotisserie uh, machines, and they are ready to eat. Well, um, we're going to do a couple of things with these. In fact, probably more. We're going to uh, do, I think, three things. So the first thing that we're going to do is open them up. And you will notice that there are some juices in the bottom. They're fully cooked, they're seasoned, and they are ready to go. So I want the meat on these chickens, but I'm not going to throw away the leavings. And so we're going to put the, the meat in here, and then we're going to package it for the freezer. And then this is my pressure cooker. It is not a canner. We are not going to do any canning of, um, of this. This is going to be our broth. We're going to make the broth in here. We're going to use what the leftovers, the bones, the skin, the juices from the bottom of the container, and we're going to make some chicken broth. So we're going to do um, packets of chicken and chicken broth, and then we're going to freeze some of the broth and we're going to um, pressure can some of the broth. So those of you that have not yet started with your pressure canning adventure will have an option to freeze this broth. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Now these vegetables right here are part of the aromatics that are going to go with the broth. So I'm just going to dump those right in my pressure cooker. Now this is like a little instant pot, only it's not a plug-in. It will go on the top of the stove. We'll set it for um, 15 pounds of pressure for about, not set it, I'll just cook it at about 15 pounds pressure for about 15 or 20 minutes. And then our broth will be ready to um, get in the bottles for canning. We'll use something different for canning. This is not a canner. So I'm going to just cut into this chicken. Now my hands are very clean. I just barely washed them. The counter is clean with steramine. And I'm going to just um, take the meat from the bones, just like you would do at your home. And the skin is going to go in this pot, and the meat, I'm going to break it up a little bit, and it will go in this bowl. And that's the first thing that I'm going to do. Actually, I'm going to cut this meat. That is better. So I'm going to continue with this, pulling the meat off, skin, bones, leavings are going to go in the pressure cooker, meat in the bowl, and then I'll bring you back when we are ready to do the next step. Here we are. We got this much meat from those three chickens, which is, looks like to me a lot of meat. And here is what my pressure cooker looks like with all of the leavings and the aromatics are down in the bottom. 
Now I have the bottom trays that the chickens were in and look at all that good stuff that is right there. So as I fill my pressure cooker with water, I'm going to do it by rinsing these bottom trays and then just pouring it right in so that we get the benefit of all of that good stuff that's on the bottom there. And now I'm going to finish filling. So all of this is going to be broth, so this is very exciting. So it's closed. Here is the jiggler. Here's the lock. I'm locking it now in place. I'll put this on the stove and we'll get this going and we'll be right back to show you what we're going to do with the meat. So I put the vinegar out so I wouldn't forget, but then I forgot. I did add a tablespoon of vinegar to the broth. That vinegar weakens the bones so that the marrow of the bones can also be absorbed by the liquid in there and add additional flavor. Here's what we're going to do with this meat. In my new freezer organization, we have these bins and they all have a lid. Notice that I have labeled this one chicken one. And in these little bins, I have meal size pouches of all different kinds of things. So I don't have any chicken pouches or packages. That's what we're doing today. When I stack these bins, one of the things that I learned the hard way was that I pre-froze the, um, the, the bags. These are quart bags that we're going to be use, using. And then I tried to fit them in here and they just wouldn't go. And so now what I do is I put this bin upright like this and then we fill the bags and I'll show you a special way that I do that. And I've just barely washed my hands yet again. I'm going to put about 12 ounces of meat in here, which is a cup and a half. And this, uh, these are called chicken chunks is how I am labeling them. And they will be useful for so many dishes. We do pasta dishes with chicken. We do chicken noodle soup. We do chicken enchiladas. I do chicken salad. If I need more than about a cup and a half, I'll take out two pouches. It's as simple as that. So it is set on ounces and I'm going to be putting. Now this meat is a mixture of the white meat and the um, dark meat and that's exactly what I want. I could have done just the breast meat and had, um, that is perfect, packets of just white meat, but I like the dark mixed in. So now what I do is, and I'll do a whole lot of these to this point and have them all lined up and then I do this next step with all of them at the same time. Now notice where 12 ounces of meat and this has been the same with um, hamburger and also with pork and everything that I've done so far. It comes up just below this line right here, which is perfect for me and I'll show you why. So I get it down here and then I try to get all the air out and I do that using a ruler. And so I just take this ruler and scoop it forward. And then while I have that air out, I go ahead and seal it and then I fold this over, I spread the meat out so that it comes to the top of where the writing is, fold it over, and put it right in the bin like this. All right, I'll do one more and show you how I do that, and then we'll go off camera to finish the rest. bringing that ruler right up to the writing and then pushing the air out and sealing, folding it to the back, spreading these out as evenly as possible so that the writing is right on the top and putting it right here. 
So when we're done, we're going to have a stack of these. I don't know how many, but we'll find out. So I'll be back when we're to that point. There was maybe a half a cup left of meat, so I just redistributed it in here. So some of these are up to 13 ounces. So we have approximately five pounds of finished, cooked, ready to go chicken meat. Now, considering that we paid $15 for those three chickens, that is about $3 per packet of this chicken ready to go. And that does not count the broth that we will have and I imagine we will have three at least three quarts of broth that we will either uh, pressure can some of them we will freeze and I'll bring you back when we're ready to do that um, but I'm very thrilled with this this is just great and we didn't use any of our electricity to cook this chicken so that is even a better buy so this will give us one two three four five six potential meals and um, which is great so that is less than $3 of chicken per meal for the two of us. And so when you do the math, it is pretty good. So you can see why I wrapped these the way that I did, because these are now going to go in the freezer. Oh, I did them all backwards. So I'm going to put them in this other way so that I can have the chicken label on the front. And so when the lid is on, it would be like this in the freezer. And when I'm ready to open it up, I can just open it up and take however many packages I want and they will be ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and take these out to the freezer and get them started. Now, in order to freeze them, I'm going to stand them up like this so that gravity does its job. Then I can go ahead and put it down like this, knowing that even if they should fall down, they still will fit inside here with the lid on. We will be back when we're ready to deal with the broth. We're all set to get ready to do our broth, to can the broth. The pressure cooker is over here. I just took it off the stove. Because it is a pressure cooker and not a canner, I can run cold water over it to reduce the pressure. So I am going to do that. And it won't take long at all for that pressure to drop completely so that we can get into that pot and see how things are going unlock it and I'm going to stand back while I open it up and I'm going to open it away from me now all of the ingredients in here have given up their best flavors already to the broth so I generally do not keep the bones or the broth I mean the bones or the aromatics I know that some people do I just don't All right, here we are. So I'm going to put the strainer, the um, funnel right here, and I'm going to put a strainer there to strain out anything else that might be left in there. And now we're going to fill these jars. I probably will have, let's see if I have a scale on the inside here. And I don't, I was hoping, oh, nope. So we'll just fill these up to about half an inch headspace. Here is a paper towel that has been dampened with vinegar. The vinegar cuts the oil and there is oil or fat here. And here are the lids that have been washed. And rings, finger tight. So we're going to have three quarts. They're going in the Nesco canner. I have it all ready. It has two quarts of water in the bottom. We put this so that it is elevated so that it will vent steam for a little while. 
it is already on, we're going to press high and we are going to give the time 25 minutes. According to the USDA, that is how long we need to do uh, broth, any meat broth at our elevation and then we're going to start it. So it is going to go. We are ready to finish up our adventure with that chicken today. So the canner is finished, it has cooled down, it's been sitting here for about five minutes. Uh oh, we're getting some siphoning. Jim, do you want to come and see if you can get a close up of this without getting burned? Which one? Wow. Isn't that something? It's been sitting here for 10 minutes and so it shouldn't be doing that. All right, I'm going to put the lid back on that. And while it continues to cool down, that happens sometimes when I do broth. And it has, um, we're just going to let it cool a little bit more. Um, I put the broth in pint jars and put them in the refrigerator so the broth is very cool. And I also forgot that I have these cool little things that um, actually one of our viewers told me about these and I got them. I think I have them on our Amazon store. I totally forgot about them. So I'm just going to now dump two cups of broth in each one of these bags. And that little holder thing works just great to hold them. And now since they are cool, I can easily <clears throat> extract the air from them carefully, easily but carefully, by letting the liquid go clear to the end. And then I'm going to freeze them flat just like this. So there's still a little bit of air right there. I'm not going to mess with it right now. So I'm going to put it right here in this little pan and I will stack all of them on top of each other. So here we go. That one actually works great. Okay, so these will be going out to the freezer. So we got three pints of broth that we will freeze. I'm going to try this again. Okay, I think they're d they're done, maybe. Not yet. Well, they're still going to be boiling a little bit. Okay. Now they're all greasy because of that siphoning. This was the main one that siphoned. So we lost some there. All right, we're going to let those cool without touching. And then we will, um, once they're completely cool, probably in the morning, because right now it's four o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, there's one that just sealed, that's good. This one just sealed. Uh, tomorrow morning I will, uh, they'll be completely cool and I will wash them with hot soapy water on the outside. Oh, dang it. My gosh, I have not ever had that happen before once I took it out. You've got siphoning there too. Yeah, there was a little siphoning there. Okay, I'm just going to cover these. Okay, wow. So I think I missed it. Okay, so never a dull moment around here. So we will let these cool down, those little rascals, and then we will uh, get them taken care of in the morning. So not a bad yield. We have um, meat packets for six meals. We have three quarts of broth or what's left after the siphoning and three pints of broth that is going to be frozen. And, and that is not a bad yield for $15. So I'm very pleased with what we have done today. And our freezer is filling up with ingredients that will be great for put, putting together our 60 days of meals for level one. And we're getting closer and closer to getting that done. So thank you for joining us today with all of our adventures and we will see you soon.